Hello everyone, once again it's me Guilherme and welcome to the third part of our multiplayer series. On the second part we started to spawn our players, we now need them to shoot each other. And we're also going to take a look at the GUI and see how it works. And even though this all might sound complex, the code is pretty similar to what you would see on a single player game. We're going to start off by taking a look at our rifle scene and how everything works. I'm going to press F3 to go to the code. The first thing this code does is preloading the bullet scene and storing it on a constant called bullet. In the process function of this node, a check is done on every frame to verify if this is the network master. This is done because only the player that has the authority over this rifle should be able to shoot and not every player that is pressing the shoot action. A timer is used to define the interval between shots and in this case that this timer is stopped and we actually have an action being pressed, in this case the shoot one, an RPC is used to spawn a bullet. Once again we are using the sync keyword on this RPC as we did on the previous video. So this bullet is going to be spawned on every peer and here we are using the flip H to define in which direction this bullet should fly. So in the case that the sprite is flipped, it means that the bullet should fly to the left. And if it's not flipped, the bullet should fly to the right. If I go to the 2D view, you can see that this scene is only composed by a sprite, which is the rifle itself and the timer, which we are using to define the interval between the shots. Now, if we go back to the script and take a look at the bullet script, we are using two constants to configure the bullet. The first one is the speed that the bullet moves and the second one is the damage that it does to our players. And as we saw before, direction is used to define whether the bullet should fly to the left or to the right. On the ready function, we call set as top level and pass true to it. This way, the bullet doesn't inherit the rifle's transform, which would cause it to move with the rifle causing an undesired effect. If I go to the 2D view, you can see that the bullet is an area 2D and we have the signal body enter connected to itself. So by going to the script again, you can see that on this function, the first thing we are using is checking if this body that has entered in the area is not the player himself. This check is done to verify that this collision is not happening with the player that shot this bullet. If it's not the parent or the player that shot the bullet, we check if this body is in a group of players. If it's not, we just return. And if everything fails, we are indeed hitting another player. And if it is another player, we call the damage function on it and pass the damage constant to it. And then this bullet gets removed from the game 3. We are also using a visibility notifier 2D, which is responsible for removing this bullet from the game once it leaves the screen. As you can see, this whole scenes script does not use any network related functions. This code is the same as you would see for a single player game, except this check right here, which instead of checking for players, would probably check for monsters or enemies. This shows us that you don't have to reinvent the wheel when creating a multiplayer game. And this is because this bullet will spawn on all peers and behave the same. For this reason, there is no need to sync its position across peers as we did with the player using slaves and masters. And this type of approach could be certainly used to create a turn-based or tower defense type of game for instance. And now we are going to take a look at our GUI scene. As you can see, this scene is composed by a root node, which is a type of control, a texture progress for the health bar, which is anchored, if I press H you can see it, to the top center of the root, in this case the GUI, and also a label node for the nickname, which is anchored to the bottom center of this root. No script is attached to this scene as it's controlled by the player script. And as you could see, this whole part of the game, the shooting, the rifle, and etc., relies on simulation. We know that all of these scenes are going to work the same on our peers, and by using this type of approach, the code is less complex and it also saves networking resources. Thank you for watching this video, again if you have questions feel free to ask them on the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.